you know, most of my messages lately has been almost like corrective, so to speak. You know, not that I'm trying to beat down on you, but there's an urgency. Amen? Because um, we are in the last days and we need to be aware of that and to be about our Father's business. We need to be doing the work. Amen? But today I want to share something a little different. Maybe it's the same kind of message, but God have showed me that a lot of us, we are limiting ourselves based on looking at ourselves. We're looking at what we have, our ability, and we are using that to limit God. But God wants us to know that in each of us, there is greatness. Not in ourselves, but because of him who lives within us. Amen? I want to share with you today a message, little becomes much with Jesus' touch. With Jesus' touch. Amen? When Jesus touched something, don't care how little it is, it has the potential, the capacity to become great. Amen? Stand with me as we go to the throne in a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, O God, for who you are. Father, we acknowledge that you are God, that your ears are open, your hands are not shortened, that they cannot save, and your ears, you hear, God. We want to thank you for answering our prayer, O oh God, that you, Lord, you, you have taken us, O oh God, and you have helped us to come to the first part of this service, O oh God, with joy unspeakable and full of glory, that your Holy Spirit was present, and he had his way, even though it took us a while to let go and let you have your way. But Father, I want to thank you for your presence so far with us, O oh God. I want to thank you for your continual presence, O oh God. Father, as we are about to get into your word, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you enable me, O oh God, to speak as an oracle of God. Speak as enabled by you, not as the ability of myself, but the ability that God has given me through his Holy Spirit. I pray that you just teach me how to relinquish my control to your Holy Spirit. Father, speak through me. Let me be but the glove, and you be the hand. You direct, you lead. Lord, and as I speak, let it be not of self, but of you, O oh God. Father, I pray for the hearts of your people, O oh God, that God, even now, that you will start preparing the soil of their hearts, O oh God, that when the seed is sown, O oh God, it find good soil, Father, and that it will grow and germinate and it will bring forth much fruit, that your people become fruitful, O oh God. Father, I pray that you will continue to have control. Lord, we, we pray that you will remove all the hindrances, all the distractions, everything that will try to, Lord, to take away the word from our hearts, Father. We, 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 we pray that you will stop it, you prevent it, O oh God. Father, let not the enemy come and steal the word away. But let it, O oh God, grow. Father, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Little becomes much with Jesus' touch. Amen. There's a song, a little hymn there, said, Little is much when God is in it. Labor not. Take these down. Labor not. For wealth or fame. There is a crown. And you can win it. If you go in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I would like you to turn to me. Turn with me. Hey, but you already turned to me. You're already facing me. But turn with me. To Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read just a few. Just a few verses there. Hebrews 11. I'm going to read five verses. Amen. Don't care how little you are, how insignificant you may see yourself. Amen. When God gets a hold of you, there is no limit to what God can do. Amen. In the Old Testament, back in Genesis, there is a story told of a man and a woman. A man who trusts and believed in God, who had nothing, who was past the age of having children. But God stepped in and made this man a promise beyond all possibility it seemed. Amen? I'm talking about Abraham and Sarah. Amen? Hebrews, 8, Hebrews 11, reading from verse 8, reads, talking about Abraham, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would not, that he, he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. 
God is promising this man an inheritance, a land. But this man don't even know. There is no foreknowledge. But he obeyed. Amen? That's one of the key of greatness when it comes to God. By faith, he dwelled in the land of promise as in a foreign country. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Amen? For he waited for a city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who promised. Therefore, from one man, and listen to this, and him as good as dead was born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Amen? The, the Bible speaks of Abraham as one as good as dead. Did he say that? Right? Now, when something is as good as dead, there is not much hope for such, right? You know, when people at the end of the age, when they get into that age, time that you're thinking about retirement, making their life comfortable so they may die, you know, they get preparing for death and they may have a, little, a nice peaceful time at the end of the year. But you see, with God, it doesn't matter what your state is, your current state is. It doesn't matter what your status, status is. God does not look at you as an individual and then limit what he will do with you. Amen? God looks at himself as the omnipotent God. Amen? And he sees in you the potential to become whatever he wants you to become, regardless of your current state, because God is able. Amen? And he can do that which is impossible. So God, when he looks at you, regardless to how little you may be, he sees in you the potential. And God wants to make great things of us. But the problem is, when we look at ourselves, we limit ourselves. We think that maybe God could do it with those people over there, but not with me. How many of you know that the people that were recorded in the Bible were of like passion or like nature as we are? You know, they had nothing special over us. They weren't aliens from a, 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 a superior planet. So God used them. They were like flesh and blood, like you and I. Amen? And God have not changed so that what he done, what he did with them back there, he's no longer able to do so, or he's no longer willing to do so. God is the same. Amen? And God wants us to see that in him, we can do all things. Amen? But we have to yield. To his touch. Amen? We have to do things his way. There's a song we sing, yes, Lord, yes to your way and yes to your will. To your will and your way. Amen? It's not just doing the things that God wants us to do, but we have to do it according to the pattern that he lays out. Amen? God is very rigid when it comes to pattern. When he gave Moses the vision the instruction to build the, tamen, the temple, the tabernacle, sorry. He said, make sure you make everything according to the pattern that you saw on the hill. Amen? Make everything according. And Moses was able to give instructions to the skillful workers in Israel, the pattern of things that they need to do. Amen? So God demands not only to do the things he calls us to do, but also to follow his instructions to a T. And this takes humility. You know, from a lot of us, when we look at ourselves, we say, you know what? 
Now, I'm not that lacking. I have some abilities. I could add a little to God. You know, I could do some things. You know, I have accomplished a few things in life. So, you know, I could, you know, God has some good ideas, but I could just add a little to him. No. That's where pride comes in. And sometimes it comes on the back end. Sometimes God starts to use us. Amen? And he starts to do things with us, through us. And all of a sudden, we start to get a little, you know, wow, look at me. It's no longer that God in me doing these things, but sometimes we start to think that it's, I had something to do with it. And then pride starts to sneak in. And you know, what comes after pride? A fall. So, in order for us to go on with God and to become great in the Lord, we need to remain humble. Amen? So, there got to be humility. Also, we have to also key. This is one of the key things with Abraham. When we're reading Hebrews 11, they call it the hall of faith. Amen? It shows the example of different men of of faith, how they overcame having net nothing but trusted in God. One of the key to success is having faith in God. You know, we say that we believe in God. But when it's time, for the, when the testing comes, we say we believe that God is able to deliver. Amen? He said he's our deliverer, right? But when we get into a situation where we are in trouble and we cannot help ourselves, Many of us, instead of turning to our deliverer, we start to doubt our deliverer. Amen? When we get tested, that's the time when we should lean on him. Sister Mel shared that, you know, whatever we are going through, we got to remember that Jesus is still the center of our joy. Amen? He is our source. Amen? So we need to have humility and we need to have faith. And we need to have trust. We need to trust God. Amen? When you trust somebody, you don't have to worry about it. Amen? There's a little thing they do, a little, where they have somebody stand and fall back, and their partner is supposed to catch them. They're supposed to trust them. Amen? If you don't trust the person behind a few, you're, gonna, you're not going to fall back. Amen? Because if they don't hold you up, you're going to fall. If, so, if they come to you and they say, you know what, okay, Sister Anna, I'm going to get you to fall back. And your partner is going to be Naomi. Would you want to fall back, Sister Anna? Naomi is going to catch you when you fall back. Dead weight. You would not want to do that, right? Because you know that little Naomi cannot bear her weight. Amen? Uh, in case you think I'm picking on Sister Anne, if Sister Gloria was to stand and I said, Naomi is going to be your partner, fall back. Sister Gloria, would you fall back and let Naomi hold you up? No, because she's very little. She don't, doesn't have what it takes to hold you up. Amen? Many of us, when we look at God, sometimes we belittle him. We don't see God as the almighty God. You say, can God really do that? And we say, Lord, I trust you, but with this one here, uh -uh. this is a bit too much. You ask me to do something that is not humanly possible. But God is saying, is there anything too hard for me to do? Many of us, I don't know, in the, in the kingdom of God, I don't know what your vision is for yourself. I don't know what you see yourself down the road. How many of you down the road see yourself exactly the same that you are today? No growth, no power, nothing, just making it in. Many of you, God have greatness in store for you. Amen? You're not meant to come and sit in church and just warm the pew or do a little here and a little there. God have greatness within you. There was a man called Stephen. His title was a waiter on tables. Amen? But Stephen did not allow his present estate to limit him. He yielded himself to God and God was able to use Stephen. He wasn't Pastor Stephen. He wasn't Bishop Stephen. He wasn't 
anything. He was just a waiter on tables. And because he yielded himself to God, God used Stephen at his hand. He did many miracles to the point that Stephen becomes such a threat to the enemy's camp that Satan orchestrated his martyrdom. But Stephen, even though he was at the point of death, did not take his eyes off of Jesus Christ and saw no, had no animosity against those who were his enemies. And he prayed for them. He asked God, do not hold this against them. In Stephen, though he waited at tables, was a measure of greatness that if Stephen had looked at his covenant position, he would have never seen. But because he trusted in the Lord, because he humbled himself, because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, God was able to use him. Amen? Now, in the scripture we just read, it says of Abraham, he was as good as dead. But he was not dead. Amen? But he was at the point, he was, I think when he, um, when he started, when, like, especially when he got his son, he was basically on the crest of being 199 years old. And his wife was 90. Past the, the age of childbearing. Both of them, as the Bible says, of Sarah, her womb was basically dead. Amen? But there was some life. They were still alive. And God took Abraham and made a mighty nation out of him. There were some bumps in the road. But because of Abraham, we have this promise. God said, in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. You see, this promise was twofold. One was in regard to natural Israel and Canaan land as we know Israel, the nation of Israel, and the Israelites. But the other real promise was the one talking about his seed, which was Jesus Christ. And the innumerable, innumerable amount of children. Now there's a song we used to sing in, in Sunday school. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons have Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Amen? We are now part of that promise of one who was as good as dead. Yet God have made mighty nation of him. If you could number the stars, if you could number the sun and the seashore, then you can number the offspring of Abraham. Amen? That's our father. He was as good as dead, but not dead. But some of us will say, well, at least Abraham had some life. Me, I am already dead. What can God do in my case? Martha said, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Amen? So you may think you are dead, but you could be like Lazarus. God could bring you back to life and make greatness out of you. You may see yourself as just dry bones. If you will turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. You know this story, the valley of dry bones. God is about to make a mighty army. And you would think he would go and look for able souls, mighty, strong. But look where he went to make his army. Ezekiel 37, from verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out, of, out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Skeleton remains. Amen? Then he caused me to pass by them all around. So God is eager to look, survey the dry bones. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were not just bones they were very dry mean they were dead for some time amen and he said to me son of man can these bones live so i answer oh god you know i like that answer you hear that answer amen we'll come back to that again he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them oh dry bone Hear the word of the Lord. This is where the power is. 
the word of the Lord. Amen? Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So in obedience, Ezekiel prophesied. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinew and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them, covered over them covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say, and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds. Breathe, and breath, O oh breath, breathe on, the, on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breathed, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Amen? These were dead, dry bones. And the Bible said they were slain. Amen? So they did not just die of natural cause, they were slain. And we know that. All of us were dead in our trespasses and sin. Amen? But Jesus Christ came and gave us life. Now some of us still see ourselves as dry bones. We're still in the valley. We're still down in the pit. We still cannot see ourselves as anything more than the bottom of the barrel. And you're saying there's no way that God can use me for what do I have? I have nothing. I am a nobody. The William Brothers sang a song say, I'm just a nobody. Trying to tell everybody about somebody who could save everybody. So even if you're a nobody, at least you can tell them about somebody who can save everybody. And when you start to tell them about that somebody who can save anybody, then you will start to realize that he could take me from being a nobody into something great. Amen? So here we see the valley of dry bones. And the Bible said, He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord, you know. And he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You see, you have to look at yourself. Okay, I know in the world they say, it's not wise to speak to yourself. But, if you see yourself as not as dry moss, as dry bones, you need to prophesy to yourself. Don't prophesy your own words. Don't say, thus says Melanie, bones come back to life. No. Jesus said, the word that I speak are spirit and they are life. Amen? Consistent with this word. These bones were dead. But he says, speak not just the word, but the word of the Lord. Amen? Because there is life in the word of the Lord. Amen? So when he spoke to these bones, they came back. The structure came back. Amen? The body was formed. The bones came. Bone came to bone. Sinews came. Skin came over. All the nervous structure, everything was there. But they were yet dead. Once again, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel and said, prophesy, speak life, breath back into them. And the Bible said they became living beings and became a mighty army. Now, if God could do this with a bunch of dry bones that were already dead, why do you think that he cannot do greatness with you when you are no longer dry bones? You have the sinews and the flesh and every skin cover you. And you have the breath 
in you already. Not just the natural breath, but you have the, the, the breath of God. You have the spirit of God living in you. So why are we limiting God? Why are we saying, yeah, far I could go, thus far I could go, and no further? Did God give you that word? How many of you think you could lead a thousand to Christ? Is that possible? Come on. How many of you think you could cause a thousand souls to be saved? Oh, that is for like, for like, like Peter, Peter, like Peter and Paul? How many of you curse and swore and told others you don't believe in Jesus Christ? You don't know him. How many of you? None of you, right? So if God can use a man that walked with Jesus for three years, know Jesus inside out, and yet denied him in such great capacity, yet God turned him around and restored him, and at his first sermon, thousands got saved. I think it was 3,000 got saved. I, I asked so many of you think you could lead a thousand to Christ and not one of you put up your hand why didn't you put your hands up because you're looking at yourself as insignificant you're not looking at yourself in the hands of God God could make a great evangelist of any one of you amen how many of you think you can bring somebody back from the dead. How many of you think you can lay your hands on the sick, someone of cancer or AIDS, and see them recover? How many of you think that's in the cards for you? How many of you think it is possible? How many of you see yourself in that capacity that with God, it is possible? And if it is possible, then pursue it. Jesus said, you have not, for you ask not. And when you ask, you ask for the wrong things. You ask for big houses, for cars, for land, for consumables. Things you could consume upon yourself. But he said, no, ask for the kingdom. He said, it is God's good pleasure to give of us the kingdom. He said, we who be in evil. If our son come to us and say, give me a bread. Would you give him a soap and a, a, a stone or a bread or a fish? Would you give him a soap and or give him stone? No, you will give him the things that he needs. Amen? If we in the natural are evil, are we know to go to give good gifts to our children? How much more our Heavenly Father in heaven will give to those who ask? Amen? Of his kingdom. We need to stop limiting ourselves in God. If we limit ourselves, we will go no further. Because God is a God that is triggered by our faith. According to your faith, so be it. You think God is going to give you the gift to go and lay hands on the sick? And then you're not going to go, you're going to sit down at home with your hands under your, you're going to sit down on your seat and you're not doing anything? Why would he give it to you? That's going to bring Punishment upon you. You're taking the talent of God and put it in the hole. But God wants you to reach out to Him. Say, Lord, I hunger. I thirst for your righteousness, for your kingdom. I want to be evidence, proof of your kingdom. When the sinner man says, I don't believe that there is no God. Show me your God. James said, show me your faith. Without your works. But I will show you my faith by my works. Elijah said to the prophet of Baal. Show me the proof of your God. He mocked them. But then he stood up. And he called the fire from heaven. And consumed the sacrifice and the water. He not only spoke of God. But he had faith and confidence in God. And he put himself out there. So that the glory of God could come through him. Many of us, we are afraid. Suppose God don't come through. Well, maybe we need to start walking closer with him.
Amen? You know, it's amazing when a child, when you hear a child speak about the parents. Amen? When I was younger, you know, just came to Canada, you know, even before that, I, used to, I watched Sesame Street all the time. And there was this, this little puppet, you know, Sesame Street, you know. There was this puppet, this little kid, who said, he's looking for his grandmother. So they asked for a description of his grandmother. He said, my grandmother is the most beautiful person in the world. So they started to bring all these comely people, all these beautiful looking people. And they couldn't find his grandmother. Then this ugly, wrinkled, old woman puppet came on the scene. And said, oh, there's my grandmother. And they looked like, she's not beautiful, she's not pretty. But he was seeing the inner person. Amen? And many of us, when we look at ourselves, we see ourselves as the world sees us. But God said, he don't look at the externals. Externals mean nothing to him. God sent Samuel, said, go to Jesse. The king of Israel is among the sons of Jesse. So Samuel went at first, of course. He went for the oldest. And he came down the line. And the father didn't even bother to consult David. Because David's a little boy. He bring all the other sons and left David out in the field. Then God said, I have not chosen any of these. Man look at the external, but God looks at the heart. Amen? He said, is there not one left? He said, yeah, just a, David, he's just a little kid. He said, go, I will not go until I see him. And when David came into the presence of Samuel, God said, this is him, anoint him to be king. When God anointed David, the Bible said that David got a different heart. The little shepherd called David became much, became a mighty man of God. That now, when it speaks about David, it does not only quote David as being the son of Jesse, but there's also almost always a title attached to him. David the king. Now, what did God say about us? He had made us kings and priests. We, you know, we're kings and queens in the kingdom of God. We are royalty. Do you know that? Not to be puffed up, but by association with God. Amen? We are royalty. We represent God in this land, in this world. Therefore, we got to reflect the glory of the kingdom. We kind of continue to profane the name of God. I'm not profane the name of God. I'm not talking about cursing and swearing. I'm talking about making God less than what he is. Many of us, we confess that we are Christians. We are part of the kingdom of God. But yet in our action, our fruits, it doesn't reflect. Or if people look at our kingdom, they will say, this is a pleple kingdom. This is a bad kingdom. This is a pleple kingdom. There's no reality to it. But it's God's desire that his greatness be seen in every single one of us. Not because that we are anything in ourselves, but because of God. We got to, our faith has to arise. We got to start to see that God is God. I cannot emphasize that God is God. He can do whatever he says. If God said to Sister Anne, I'm going to make you a mother of millions, it is, it is possible. You don't know how? It doesn't matter. If God prophesied, if God speaks it to your life, it will happen. Jesus said, those who believe in my name, this thing they will do. They will speak with new tongues. They will lay their hands on the sick. They will bring the dead back to life. He said, the things, listen to this. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, the things that Jesus did, they will do greater. That's the word of God. It's not what I said. It's what God said. So we got to take off the limits. We got to say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You got to seek after the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of greatness. There is no wimps in the kingdom of God. 
the weakest soldier in the kingdom of God could put his foot on the devil's neck over trample on the foot all the works of the devil Jesus said of John the Baptist of those born to woman there is none as great as John the Baptist but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him is that the word of God amen so why are we limiting ourselves we need to pull back the curtains and allow God hands to extend and let the touch of God come upon us we got to see ourselves through the eyes of God stop looking at yourself to human eyes faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God we got to believe God when God tells us to get out of our comfort zone leave mom and dad leave our comfort zone and go where I, I'm going Lord I don't know where you're sending me it doesn't matter go I am leading you it's not the blind leading the blind it's the one of the perfect picture of everything leading us amen so we got to have the faith trust God and see who we are in God start to act it out start to put the steps in place there's every journey great journey begins with the first step you know that you know if you if you're in the line on your mark set go if you don't go I guarantee there's nowhere you're gonna win the price nowhere impossible don't get as great as bolt is if when the guns go out, go on, say, on your mark set pow if both don't take a first step I guarantee you can't win that race is that right as great as God wants you to be until you take that first step of obedience it's not happening but once you take the first step you start one step upon the other and you may start sluggish like you know a little bumps along the way but when God sees that you have put in the effort forward when you're not digging the talent and putting it in the you know, hole and putting the talent in the ground he sees that you are willing to obey he starts to add to whom much has been given much is required and for those who are faithful he gives more but it has to start someplace amen now some of us may still thinking that yeah those are people in the Bible but you remember when John the Baptist came on the scene in Matthew 3 you know the scribes and the Pharisees everybody came out and John said to them in verse 5 of Matthew 3 he said then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan confessing their sin but when he saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sadducees coming to to him his baptism he said to them brood of vipers who warn you to flee from the war to come you see John knew their heart he said therefore bear fruits of repentance in other words show proof of your desire for God to turn from your hypocrisy and turn to God amen and he said do not think to, to, your, to say to yourself we have Abraham as our father for I said to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these very stones amen I want you to focus on the end path children of the promise even the dead stones you know not just bones because bones once had life right so you say well you know bones you know at least it was human being before Abraham was as good as dead but now he gone to make it even more impossible he said stones he could make children to Abraham from these stones and you're telling me he can't do that with us which is easier go back to the garden of Edom taking clay and making man over 
then making children unto Abraham are just taken already, we who are alive. Amen? With God, the things that seem impossible are very possible. God wants to use us as a church, as individuals, to proclaim his goodness. Amen? It's in us. Every single one of us who believe in Jesus Christ, there is greatness in you. Hear what the Bible says. The very power, listen to this here. The very power that brought Christ back from the dead. The resurrection power of God that after the crucifixion brought Christ back to life. He says that same life, that same power is in us. It's not out there. It's residue. It's in us. It's for us to access it and allow it to be manifested in our lives. God cannot give you more, anything more. The, the Holy Ghost is already in you. We just need to move into his fullness. Many of us, we have been baptized into Jesus Christ. We are Christ. We are now members of the household of faith. But now we got to go the other step. Now we got to be consumed. You know, just as you went in the water of baptism, you got to be immersed in the Holy Ghost. Be overwhelmed by the Holy Ghost. Be filled to overflowing. That when there's a need, when there's a word of prophecy to come forth, God could put any of you. When there's a miracle that needs to be done, He could put any of you. When there's a politician in Parliament Hill that needs to shut his mouth, God could send you to prophesy to him. As it does say the Lord. And you speak the word of God to him. And hopefully the media is there. So that when it comes to pass. They could remember. This little lady. This little prophetess. Nobody. Spoke these words. And so it is. Because. Greater is he that's in you. Than he that's in the world. God. Is in you. And. He. Has greatness. For you. But we got to draw from it. So we got to trust in him. We have to have faith. We have to be obedient. And we have to press. Paul said, I'm not attained. But I press towards the mark of the lower calling. No, the high calling. We need to press to go higher in Christ. So none of you, limit yourself. Do not limit yourself. Do not say, oh... Can a million people come to Christ because of me? Mm, nah, I don't see that. Who gave you the right to say that? Who gave you the right to limit God? Can I walk into a hospital room and lay my hands on one who has been given up hope and I just, they're try, try, trying to let them die in comfort and lay my hands on them and say, let me cover? Can God do that with me? And you said, no, that's not for me. Who gave you that right? It's not him who will it or him who run it, but God that shows the mercy. It's God who initiates. So you don't tell God what or what he cannot do with you. It's not in you. It's not up to you to tell God what he can do or cannot do with you. God, these are my capabilities. Beyond this, no can do. That's not your right. God can do anything with you. He can do great things with you. Amen? And he wants to do great things with us. But we have to yield to him. Amen? I'm going to close now. What I want you to do, okay? In your reading through the Bible, anything that you see where God talks about greatness, where he talks about what his children will do, I want you to stop and Pray those things into your life. Say, Lord, I receive that this which you have written in your word is also applicable to me because I am one of your children. And if you choose to now, don't dictate what God will do to you. I say, if you are willing to use me in this manner, it is possible because with you all things are possible. Amen? 
So I want us to stop limiting God. Stop limiting ourselves as part of the kingdom of God. We are more than conquerors. And you guys understand that terminology, right? Someone who is more than a conqueror doesn't have to conquer. A king, a queen, they are more than conquerors. You want to tell you why? Because they send the armies to conquer and they control the army. So they go and they, 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 they take the conquerors as their own. And they didn't even lift a finger. They are more than conquerors. The armies are the conquerors. But they take all the credit for it. You get that? We, you walk into victory. That's why God said we are more than conquerors. Jesus went. Not that we are more than Jesus. Don't get me wrong. Jesus went and conquered. And we are gaining the benefits, access to the fruits of his, vic of his victory. He delivers it to us. So we didn't have to fight. I mean, the conquest is to get the price. Amen? But if we get in the price without even conquering, we can say we're more than a conqueror because we haven't conquered, but yet we are partakers of the, the price. That's what God did for us. He conquered for us so that we could be more than conquerors to Christ who loved us. He fights for us and we get the benefits of it. Let's not limit God. Let's arise to greatness in God. So next time you're faced with a situation, be it at work, at play, at home, give God the opportunity to show greatness to you. When somebody needs a word of encouragement, when somebody needs a word of prayer, volunteer. When somebody is down hard, down pressed, in a situation, start at the little beginnings. Do not despise little beginnings. Start small and grow thereby. By reason of use, we will grow. Amen? Into maturity. From milk to meat. Amen? So, and I'd ask any of you by, to, by next Sunday to become great men and women of God. But I'm asking you from this time forward that you will see with eyes of faith that there is no limit to what God can do with every single one of you. And that you would not limit yourselves. But you will put yourself in a position that God can use you. So when he said, who will go? Remember the year that King Uzziah died? Isaiah said, the Lord, high and lifted up. And his trail filled the temple. And after that, they came a cry, who will go? He was in a position that he said, send me, Lord. So you put yourself in a position that when God has a need, you could volunteer. And then after you put your hand down. Amen? Let us go on in the Lord. God have a work for us to do, and it is a doable work. With man, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You know, God could use new life to turn Canada around. You may say, I don't think so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen of us in there right now, right? He started out with twelve. Didn't he? Twelve. One of them was a cook. Right? What happened? Did not he turn the whole world upside down through these? Right? So if God could do it back then, maybe God have lost his mojo as coral poker. Have God lost his power? No. God is still God. God has not lost his power. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We are the ones who have changed. We have limited God. Amen? We need to take off the limits. Allow the touch of God. Allow the anointing of God to fall upon us. The little that we have can become much with the touch of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, O God, for who you are, God. Father, there is nothing in us. We are flesh and blood. But Father... For whatever reason, you have called us, you have drew us by your Holy Spirit, and you have called us into your kingdom for a time as this. Just as Esther became queen as a time, during that time, to rescue the children of Israel. So, God, we are saved right now for a time as this. There's somebody out there, there's souls out there, countless numbers of souls that need to be affected by our lives as we give ourselves to you, oh God. Father, I pray that you remove the scale from our eyes, Lord. Remove the, the, the limits that we have put 
on ourselves, thinking that this is all I can do within myself. Help us to see beyond our own abilities and to trust in you and to place ourselves in your hand and allow you to work through us your good pleasure, whatever it be. When you call and say, I'm going to do a great things to you, let us not be like Moses who said, I cannot speak. Let us not be like Gideon who said, I am a nobody. But let us say, yes, Lord. Let us say as Mary, do unto me as you, as you desire. Your maidservant is ready. Father, I pray, help us, O oh God, to grasp your promises, to lay hold of your promises and to apply them to our lives, to walk in the promises of God. Father, I pray that you will take off, help us to take off the limits and that we can go there, go into the vineyard. Lord, be there, O oh God, to, to meet the needs. Lord, for we are indeed your hands extended. So, Father, I pray, help us all to function in the capacity that you desire us to function in. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And this is for the children of God. For anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There is a the potential. You may be that stone. But God can take that stone and make it a son of Abraham. Amen. They are the capacity for greatness in you. But it comes to giving your life to Jesus Christ. I know we as Christians have been limiting, limiting God. And when you look at us, you may see nothing. But we, 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 we confess and we repent and we're going to allow God to be great in us. Amen? And I, I, I encourage you, give your life to Jesus Christ. Not only will you escape hell and gain heaven, but you will be able to help many along the way. You'll be able to help your friends, help your loved ones. Amen? Come on this journey, which is worth it all. Amen? Anybody would like to give a life to Jesus Christ. Today is a good day. Tomorrow is not promise. You see, the watchman said, you got to warn them. I warn all those who are indulged in iniquity, all who are doing wrong, turn. The sword is coming. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He rather for you to turn and to be saved. Amen? So I give this opportunity. Anyone would like to give the life to Jesus Christ today? The altars are open. He is here to save. Those who call upon him, you will by nowhere cast out. Those who come to him, you will receive them. Amen? Amen. You want to talk later? Any opportunity, come. But please do not go on without Christ. Amen? And for your saints, Make a promise to God that you will seek Him to find out what He wants for you in life and that you will not limit Him. You will allow Him to be great in you. Amen? Amen.